Bot Talk Podcast. Welcome to our podcast. My name is Sophia. My name is Andrew. And today we are going to talk about uh, some interesting topics. We are from startup Bot Talk. And Bot Talk uh, produces text to speech uh, software. And our goal is to sound as uh, close to human uh, speaker as possible. We would like to give you some insights in our work in the startup and just take you with us to, um, on our startup journey. Okay, and today um, the first topic we're going to talk about is the reason why we switch to English instead of German. We, uh, we actually started this podcast in German uh, as we are a German company sitting in Hamburg. And now we're talking to you uh, in English. So, yeah, uh, I think um, this is a, a great topic. And uh, maybe, Sophia, you can, um, yeah, you can also um, share some um, insights. Why did we do it? Um, yes, like uh, our internal communication is in, always in English. So we're like an international team. Like some of us are sitting in the USA, some are like in Greece and like we are all over the place. Just a few people are sitting here in Germany. So for us, it's kind of normal to talk in English uh, with each other. And also our communication, I think a lot of is in English for, in, for the outside community. Like our website is in English and all the stuff. But we first think like, hey, maybe it would be better to talk in German because our main market at the moment is Germany and then it's maybe better for like our customers and like who are maybe interested in us when we're starting in German but we saw that it's yeah not the best fitting language for us and for our company and we also want to go international so maybe we're gonna switch now to English and see what like our numbers podcast numbers are saying when we're just talking in another language. Yeah, true. Um, some internal and some uh, very good points, uh, but also, um, as we mentioned in, the, in our previous episodes, is uh, you know the reason why we're doing this podcast is uh, actually to uh, to also become podcasters ourselves uh, to produce uh, another product that we thought about. And the idea of this product was okay. It would be great uh, if we can use text-to-speech pro uh, product that we have uh, in order to produce um, multi-language podcasts. Because our customers are already producing podcasts and the next uh, step uh, would be, okay, uh, you are recording a podcast already. Uh, wouldn't it be great to actually translate what you're recording in your native language into another language and let uh, our text-to-speech software translate that into audio and that was our initial idea and we tried it out and it turns out um, you can produce pretty nice uh, sounding podcasts uh, using um, written text the problem is uh, how do you um, how do you actually get the script and because we are talking in a, like a free form fashion uh, uh, with each other it is pretty difficult to translate what we are talking uh, about into speech. So you could use uh, like a speech to text software to do that. And we looked into that. Uh, we looked at the quality of uh, what uh, speech to text um, actually uh, delivers right now at different levels. We, I think we tried Microsoft, IBM and several others. Uh, and we thought, wow, this uh, kind of free form communication that we are doing right now, just a dialogue, uh, uh, if you try to kind of, you know, look at the written script, it really doesn't look very good on paper. And when you, uh, um, what's worse, when you translate it in other languages, like, you know, if you translate German to English, then it really doesn't look good. Because, you know, the, uh, all the um, small nuances, uh, all the jokes uh, and, so, and so on and so forth, uh, all the slang that we sometimes use just, you know, gets lost in translation. So that is a um, great thing, I think, uh, that we learned in a very short uh, amount of time. Uh, and we saved like, you know, a huge amount of work um, not building this product because, uh, or, you know, um, um, to kind of uh, uh, see for ourselves, okay, that's as an idea, this wouldn't be a good product. Um, we, I think we, we still uh, are um, focused on the product of, uh, uh, of podcasts, 
But I think the focus now is, uh, okay, if you have a pre-created um, script for whatever you're doing, or if you, have, if you are a blogger and you're writing something, and you say, okay, I'm writing this stuff, uh, can I take what I already written and just translate it into like audio uh, in form from podcasts? Uh, that would work. Uh, also translated it uh, into different languages, that would work as well. But as I said before, this uh, like a freestyle uh, uh, communication dialogue, I think uh, it's not a great idea to, um, to try to do it yet in, um, in the form that we thought, uh, we thought about it. Yeah, I think everyone who tried to transcript an interview, maybe in university or somewhere else, uh, know the struggle when you have like a 30 minute or an hour interview, which you need to transcript, it's like taking hours. So normally like the tens of the time you need to transcript everything and see, okay, maybe there's like a grammar fault or did I need to uh, rewrite the sentence? So when we translate it, that is like for everyone is understandable and not that you are hearing then our podcast with our like free speech, how we're talking, and this is not like possible to understand. So I think this is like way easier than for us now first to focus on the English one and on our product side that we have just our manuscript for everyone. And when we have this, this is like super easy to translate in different languages because we have really good tools to translate different texts and then we just put it in our CMS. So we focus more on our main products we already have and see um, how it goes like this and going further with this testings and experiments and not like taking too much time now building some speech to text, which is really, really good because I think this would be like taking like a long um, time to produce. Yeah, indeed. And yeah, that's uh, one of the things that we wanted uh, to do. Uh, and I think we are succeeding in that uh, to be faster and to make the decisions uh, to kill our ideas also faster before, before like it's uh, too late or we spend too much time, uh, too much money, too, ma uh, too many resources uh, into building them. Just, you know, kill the ideas that don't work. And, you know, producing this podcast is one of the uh, benefits of that as, uh, you know, becoming the uh, podcast producers ourselves and see, okay, how audio actually works, uh, what are the... What, what is needed and what is not maybe needed in this, uh, in this, uh, in this kind of space. Yeah, um, so I think that's a good learning and uh, yeah, I'm very um, keen on seeing how the numbers are going to, uh, to be when we, uh, when we go international and uh, update our feet and say, okay, now we're not only in Germany, but everywhere in the world. And so to the international uh, viewers, thank you, uh, welcome uh, and yeah, like, subscribe, and whatever you, you must do in, on our YouTube channel or uh, uh, whatever, uh, or even, uh, you know, rate us on, uh, on iTunes, that's very important. Um, I think uh, topic number two that we, uh, we were thinking about uh, today when we prepared the show notes uh, was, uh, let's maybe talk about uh, our second product uh, that is uh, uh, rolling out pretty successful, I would say, and um, um, that is audiobooks. So, Sophia, you are working um, closely with the, with the team that produces audiobooks. Maybe you can tell uh, the audience some more about that, that uh, process. Yeah, sure. So, we're not just focusing on the product, um, podcast product, and also on the audiobooks. So, we um, successfully produced our first audiobook this week. And this goes really, really good, especially. So we have hired uh, one new person in our QA team. It's um, Franzi. She's working just on the audiobook production because uh, when we get the manuscript from our customers, so they prepare like everything that is like a good written text for our bot. But when we paste it in, so there's like some spelling mistakes and sometimes, um, yeah, we need some more pauses. So we have good listening comprehension. So we have for this, we have Franzi. So she's hearing the whole audiobook and going through every point and see like how can I like achieve the highest quality and make the, yeah, like the comprehension better for the book. Mm -hmm. And normally when it's like a take an uh, audiobook for four hours. She's taking the, like the third of the amount of the time. So she's taking like 12 hours for the correction. 
and then we sent it to our customers and they said that, yeah, okay, this is pretty good. We are like really happy with this, but we have some, yeah, some, some things which is not like perfectly. I mean, this is like not a surprise because it's our first audiobook, and we then have a look and see, okay, sometimes we need some more pauses. So when we have like a bullet points list, then sometimes our bot is like running through the list and then it's like not good to understand. So we focused more on this, like, okay, we need to make a pause after every bullet points and we make, um, need to make some, um, yeah, some improvements on this. And then one of our team member, Adani, had a great idea. He said, okay, for the future, it would be like better. So we making the first chapter, produce it also with our QA team. That is, everyone is making like the improvements and then we're gonna send it to our customers and see, hey, uh, what are you thinking about? Is the, is the listening comprehension good or is it too fast? Do you need some more specific things that you think it's better, some more pauses or something, because everyone has like a different feeling what's hearing good. And I think this was like a really good idea we had like during this process of the audiobook production. So we're gonna send now for every book first to the customer, one chapter hearing, okay, what do you think about it? Is it fine for you? Or do we have like some super specific things and what do you want to want? Yeah. That's a great. That's a great idea. Uh, I think uh, also, and uh, I think the whole the whole uh, kind of uh, know how uh, of uh, bot talk is based on the experience that we uh, that we get uh, from uh, uh, from news publishers, and now we are getting with the new customers or new customer uh, verticals. And um, the way tech uh, tech uh, side is um, you know is structured at bot talk is that. Um, uh, our machine learning part uh, of uh, uh, of uh, of the so software we built is able to recognize the errors, and so um, and the reason why it's able to recognize these errors is that uh, you know sometime in the uh, in the beginning we uh, kind of uh, uh, it was a manual input from our uh, from our students from uh, anyone working on quality assurance for audio. Uh, and then we translated this manual input into um, into models, and now uh, our software can uh, really uh, good recognize where could be the errors in the pronunciation of the words. So it can recognize, okay, uh, this word may be sounding off, or this is a personal name, and that that doesn't sound so good. Um, but mm, that depends on the style of the text and on the genre of, uh, of the text, and uh, that's why the um, the good thing about audiobooks is that you know it uh, broadens our um, horizon of what we can do with our text-to-speech uh, engine, and that's why this input uh, that Fancy is delivering is uh, given us every time um, is um, is just invaluable for for uh, the uh, the model that we are building. And overall, for the quality, you know, one of the one of the things that you know makes Bot Talk uh, so unique is uh, that uh, we are able to insert the pauses uh, with the right uh, kind of uh, in the right places uh, with the right length. So it would be, um, you know, the example that we always give is, uh, you know, if the uh, if the sentence is too big, then a human narrator would need a pause um, inside of this sentence, right? And if you Try to you know uh, generate this sentence uh, um, in audio without the pause. It will sound weird. You wouldn't know why, but it would sound like robotic because um, you know people need to breathe. You uh, you need to put this pause inside of your generated speech as well, so the human brain can understand and can relate uh, to the um, generated uh, audio uh, more. The same goes with the um, with the shorter sentences, right? So something like stop. The sentence is so small, um, it has semantics behind it, you know. Uh, when you read this out loud, you would make a longer pause because that, that means something, that the sentence is only one word sh uh, short. So all this uh, stuff is, uh, you know, built in into our, um, into our model. And so the, uh, now we are noticing that we need to, like, uh, really tune up 
the model for audiobooks. And that's, for me, as a linguist, is very interesting. To say, okay, uh, you may need more pauses in audiobooks than you need it in, um, uh, in news articles. And now it's a very exciting time to actually see uh, yeah, how much, uh, how many, uh, you know, how much uh, do you need to tune? Is it like, you know, two milliseconds that you need to add? Where do you need to add it? Is it like after subtitles? Is it after, um, uh, after a, certain, um, a certain paragraphs of the text? And uh, yeah, that's very, uh, very exciting, I think. Uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to I think, listening uh, to this uh, whole book. Um, and just you know, hear it ourselves. Uh, I uh, myself, I um, I took a small like uh, peek behind the scenes, and you know, it does sound really good already. And I'm very excited, and I'm very excited also about uh, you know the customer feedback uh, and the listener feedback after that um, um, to to actually hear people uh, people realizing, uh, wow, that is. Uh, that is a quality that we not, uh, did not expect. That is something that is, I think, very rewarding. I don't know about you, but I think every time we try to like pitch this idea for like uh, uh, investors or um, for our clients, I think this part where uh, either me or you uh, show, you know, the quality of the speech, uh, you know, it's always like, wow, why does it sound so good? Uh, so I don't know, for me it's like the most rewarding thing uh, in this whole like company is just, you know, this one phrase or this one slide or the reaction after this one slide when we show, okay, and that's how bot talk sounds. Yeah, that's right. Normally the people are always thinking like, oh now it's like the computer generated speech is not that good, it's not hearing like nice for me. And always when I show it to the customers, they are really surprised about it, about our quality and how, how human it sounds. So this is like pretty good. And last week I had also like a call with a, a newspaper from Austria and they said like, no, we want a German speech, yeah, sure, but we want it with an Austrian accent. And they said, yeah, we, we, but we saw it on your, on your platform that it's possible. And then I showed them also this with our accent and they said, yeah, that's pretty comfy for us because our um, listeners would like to hear it with this accent and then it's like way better for them to understand it and feel comfortable with it and this is uh, always like a really nice experience. Yeah, sure. And I think the topic number three uh, that is connected to this one is um, it has to do with the um, discussion that uh, I uh, had uh, with uh, our uh, CTO, Igor, um, and the uh, input from our quality assurance uh, uh, team. So um, in order for bot talk, and the question was very, uh, very simple. Like um, our head of QA was confused. Uh, he said, okay, I don't understand, you know, what, what we are really trying to achieve with QA, with quality assurance. On one hand, uh, uh, we want uh, to have our quality of uh, audio, of speech, on the highest level on the market. This is our, uh, this is the benchmark, right? Uh, we want to go out there and say, you know, Botox has the best quality of uh, speech out there. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have also issues uh, or, you know, standard QA issues like, you know, this button doesn't work or our interface is broken or, I don't know, API is lagging or, what, whatever, uh, you know, um, um, some software box inside of the platform that, you know, every, uh, every software has. And that, you know, um, actually uh, was the moment that, you know, uh, was uh, um, very daunting for me to realize, wow, you know, um, there are so many things that I think, like, you know, are completely clear that I really need to communicate even more clear, uh, clearly for, to, the, um, to the members of the team. And so we, we had a call uh, with Igor and, uh, and you know, uh, I tried to explain you know, this once again and say, okay, um, yes, we are a software company. So of course we need to have a classical QA and testers that test for software bugs. Things like you know, the registration works, uh, you know, the confirmation mail arrives and stuff like that. And for that, we really need to create the, the suite of tests uh, that, you know, our um, uh, QA engineers can go through regularly after every release and make sure 
that everything works and the majority of those tests should be automated as well. Uh, um, uh, so, you know, uh, so we don't have uh, to spend uh, much time with that. And, you know, and the bugs that customers already um, uh, send us also have to be managed somehow with this, with this um, uh, kind of quality assurance part of the team. But another quality assurance that is very unique for bot talk is, uh, um, and that you know we don't see by uh, with other uh, companies is uh, that's a quality of speech. The quality this is the, the integral part of uh, of uh, our um, of our software that nobody actually sees on the outside. So th this is the thing that they hear. But in order for this to work, you know, it has to be uh, so, ma um, so many things has, uh, have to be made uh, inside of a platform. So um, uh, it catches those um, errors uh, in, in pronunciation. Uh, so when the, the software itself doesn't, is not sure if it's an error or not, then the human validation should go through. And it has to be internationalized. Uh, it, it has to work not only in... Uh, in English, uh, but in all the 127 languages and dialects that we support, and uh, it, it has to be scalable. So uh, when we go into like a Swedish market, we could give only this part of our software to um, uh, to um, uh, some people that uh, uh, actually speak Swedish, and uh, you know, be sure that okay, this is only hear this kind of things. You don't need to know, you know, the whole majority of uh, what 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 doing. Your job is just to hear those nuances. Are they sound? Are we, you know, um, uh, and correct them if uh, if they're wrong. Um, so this is uh, this was a, um, the great kind of uh, also um, topic I think and. Uh, um, that we discussed and also had a, a major implications on uh, uh, on product development, but also on hiring and staffing. Uh, this is something like you know we are now struggling, of course, uh, because um, you know we are getting better and better and better in recognizing this, those errors. So the people that used to uh, sit down and hear those texts for us those small nuances, they get, they get frustrated, right? So because you, you sit down like, you know, for eight hours and you listen a week, whatever, and, and you listen to those uh, texts and majority of them like are perfect. Like 99% of those long texts are perfect. So of course, you know, in the beginning people were hearing those texts and, you know, in every text we had, you know, a couple of errors and that was, you know, maybe not the most exciting job in the world, but that was still rewarding, you know. You you did some you did some good, but after you hear like you know two hundred articles, and you know you in those two hundred articles you only find like two errors, that must be very difficult, and that is like both product problem. Um, we need to change our product to to make uh, to make this process more uh, efficient, uh, and of course people problem and that you know we need to kind of solve. Both of it, and uh, yeah, and that was very exciting for me. This um, um, this part of the week to figure out, okay, what is of this is like a people problem. What is of this is a psychological problem. What is of this uh, uh, um, is a um, software problem. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you you talk with our QA team uh, pretty often. Uh, so, what is your take on on this uh, this part of uh, our uniqueness? I mean, on the f first, I think it's like pretty good that our sp uh, speech is getting so good that our QA team is like listening to it eight hours and not recognizing any faults. Um, but otherwise, I can good understand that it's like not the yeah wonderful task to uh, hearing like hours of audio files and and after that you hear that it's like you have no correction and then it's like okay, I work for eight hours, but I achieve, it, mm -hmm. it feels like nothing. So this, this was like good for us, I think, to sort it out and see how can we like optimize this, mm -hmm. that we now um, have like different QA processes that they're more hearing to different customers and just like hearing a few parts. Mm -hmm. And when we know, okay, like, one of the customers, they are really, really good because we recognize that a lot of customers are always using similar words in their articles. Mm -hmm. So 
the editor have like one, one type of writing. And then they're always using the um, similar words. And if we have everything inside, then normally the quality is really, really high. And on the other side, now on the audiobooks, we see, okay, we have there, we have like lots of pages on um, in our dictionaries where we correct the words because this is now a completely different field and completely different words which are using there. And there we need like to make our improvements and then it's like more fun for our QA team going to the, to the process and always like find something. So this is like pretty interesting, I think, to see like every customers when they're like reaching the point of the quality that after that it's like, it's really good and then we don't have to be pay like a, too much attention anymore on this because now we achieved it and then it's like we just like need to make some yeah once a week we need to have, hear it and then it's fine yeah mm, i think uh, you know optimizing um, this process is uh, i think very important because as i said before you know uh, or as i mentioned in the uh, this like a background of uh, our text uh, uh, side of things um, the robot, uh, the software is becoming more intelligent every day. So that means that, you know, the changes, the manual changes that we did in the beginning, uh, like, you know, when providing the, like a phonetical uh, way of pronouncing certain words or uh, when providing the strict rules on pronouncing certain numbers, uh, those changes are actually not needed anymore because software has become, our software has become our model has become so good in recognizing, uh, recognizing uh, those kind of things that actually our changes now are worse than what the software can make by itself. So then this is also uh, something that uh, you know we need to like reevaluate and say uh, and you know uh, reapply our resources, uh, our QA or quality of uh, speech resources there to kind of redo our our changes, our dictionaries. Uh, um, are not uh, that relevant in, in some things because, um, you know, the software learned. And that is astonishing for us to recognize, like, wow, okay, that is uh, huge uh, that the, this, uh, that the, um, uh, the machine is now better in, uh, like, uh, pronouncing that uh, better than our suggestion. Um, so this is like, you know, very, very uh, um, exciting time, I think, for, um, uh, for like artificial intelligence and for, um, for things that, you know, can, this, this thing can do at the moment or recognizing the numbers uh, and saying, okay, I, I understand this is, a, um, this is actually a, a year uh, and, not, um, and not some kind of number and I, I think this is a date or I think this is the time and date and so on and so forth. And um, I think it's very exciting. And uh, uh, this is kind of the point where um, because the software became intelligent, we need to build more intelligent tools uh, uh, to, to kind of uh, um, to, make, uh, to make the work of uh, our QA team uh, even worthwhile, you know, to, to, to make their, uh, their work not, not as uh, like, you know, um, um, artificial as it was before, not as uh, straightforward as before, but you know, they now re need to like, you know, do more intelligent work <laughs> and more like uh, uh, things that, you know, humans are good for, uh, where human intuition is good for and so on and so forth. And I'm, yeah, um, looking at that and uh, thinking, okay, when uh, will, will we, we will be so good that, you know, we maybe sometime don't even need a QA uh, in uh, like uh, um, in the uh, unique uh, kind of way, when is the model so good that we can say, you know, just leave it some time and we'll learn and we'll be better. Um, and uh, maybe those changes and those this huge amount of work that we are putting or we were putting in the beginning, it will be become uh, it will shrink, and uh, we will only need to, to work on nuances, like you said on things like a, a very domain specific. Okay, this, this is the book about like medicine and there are many, many um, words that are very uh, like medical terms and those are like nice problems to solve. And when we are some, somewhere there, when we only need to, uh, to, uh, to actually 
uh, take those kind of problems into account, I think it's, uh, it will be a huge leap in the, in the whole like text-to-speech uh, uh, um, software, uh, software that, uh, that we built. Yeah. Yes, of course, that would be like the best case scenario when we have like the bot is correcting everything on their self and we don't have to make a huge QA team which is improving everything. I think this takes a bit time, but I'm sure that we're going to reach this point and then we just need like to have a small QA team, have a look on just a few things and the bot is like perfectly itself. Yeah, yeah. And it will happen, uh, and it's happening uh, quicker than I anticipated. I always, um, uh, in my talks, uh, I always say, okay, three to five years time is when you will not see uh, hear the difference. But I think it will be even quicker than that. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, okay, Andre, thank you for all your insights. I think I also learned a lot today from the QA side, also from your view. So it was also pretty interesting for us, well, for me. Yeah, and thank you for the insights uh, from the um, audiobooks perspective and from the process that we are doing there. It was also helpful and I think that's a great thing to, uh, to kind of uh, have every week uh, also to, to learn uh, from each other and maybe um, we'll be, uh, uh, we also have uh, someone else out there uh, with some insights or uh, some things that, uh, to think about uh, from the field of startups or from text-to-speech, whatever. And yeah, uh, we join you um, next week. Till then then.